G'day, welcome to Matt's Workshop. Today's video is on the Ultimate Air Assist from Cloudray Laser. I'm going to be showing you how to install this into uh, my 80 watt red and black laser. It's uh, going to be a good improvement. At the moment, what I do is manually turn air on and off at a power switch when I need to have air on or off for different parts of the job. So I need to pay attention to the job all the time to see when I'm going to turn air on and off. I could just do engraving, stop, and then do the cutting with the air. I like to do some of my engraving without air, and that's where the Ultimate Air Assist will come in very handy. The Ultimate Air Assist will automatically turn on the air pump at the start of a job and turn off the air pump at the end of the job, with the added benefit of being able to manually turn it on and off by a switch. All the components are available on Cloudray Laser's website. You'll find the, the link to the product in the description down below. So this is the package contents for the Ultimate Air Assist from Cloudray Laser. So what I have included in the package is this uh, electric relay, a push fitting ball valve. We also have a pneumatic solenoid valve. We have uh, a switch just a small switch, a flow restrictor, some more fittings for the pneumatic solenoid as well as a T-piece connector, uh, the connector for the controller panel as well as a set of four diodes and a piece of air hose. Now the first thing that we're going to set up is the pneumatic solenoid and what we eventually want it to look like is this so to do that we are going to grab the solenoid and you'll notice that it comes in a different configuration than what is shown here so if we loosen this little cap on the top here we don't have to pull it all the way off but just enough to lift and turn it 90 degrees and then tighten it back down again so now we have A, R and P marked on the bottom there and uh, we're going to start with A. So on the A we're going to have the small hose or air connector that goes on that side. On the front we'll have the flow restrictor connection which is the one that's got the little um, tap there on the front and then the last piece to go to this at the moment will be on the P which is the T piece so we have, I'll tighten these up shortly, but we've got the T-piece, the flow restrictor on the front, if you want to call that the front, and on the other side we have the inlet valve, inlet piece. So now we just connect up the air hose to these two sides here. So now it is the way that it should be configured. So the next thing that we're going to do is wire up this solenoid. So what we need to do is loosen the screw that's on this side. and this should pop off now if you pull the screw all the way out you need to get into this piece here it may be a bit hard to see but uh, in there there's a little plastic piece you just push it down and the solenoid section of uh, the electronic section will pop out Now if we refer to the wiring diagram, you'll see that on the solenoid we have a diode that needs to be placed in there. So I'll just um, bring this in a bit closer, hoping it will focus there for you. But if it doesn't, on this side we have a positive and on the other side we have a negative. So what I need to do is put the diode in between those two poles. So I've got the diode in there and the line that's on the diode is on the side with positive. So once the diode's been wired and the two wires from there, so feed these two wires through. Back up like that. The screw goes back down through the center. and then retighten. 
So that's all there is to the pneumatic solenoid. And we have some screws there that we can mount it in, uh, some uh, screw holes there that we can mount it inside the machine. So to install the solenoid, the air, the pneumatic solenoid, what I've done is I've found the black air hose that comes from the back pump. So it comes through the side of the machine here and that gets cut. So that black hose goes all the way to the nozzle where we installed that tap. So the air from the pump goes into this little air inlet and on the T-piece on the other side, that air hose goes up to the nozzle. So this will be mounted in here somewhere secure, but uh, now we've got the wires attached and the air attached to the pneumatic solenoid. So the first wire I'm going to connect up is the positive connection that came from the solenoid, positive, and it's going to go into pin 6, and pin 6 on the control panel, if we look up here, is 24 volt. I'll put the diagram up here as well so you'll be able to see the diagram. So this is pin 6, 24 volt, which connects to the positive terminal on the pneumatic solenoid. So just wiring up as I go, trying to make it easy to follow. And the negative terminal that comes from this one, from the pneumatic solenoid, that will run up to the switch. And that switch is also connected through to pin 5, which is a negative connection, and it's labelled here wind. Soldering is not my favourite job in the world, but I have soldered up the switch and um, to make it easy when I go in to put them into the machine, I put labels on the end and that uh, the ones I've wired up are the status of wind and the ground cable. So that's um, wiring diagram is on, on the internet as well. So if you can follow a wiring diagram, you can solder up those. And now we're going to go install the switch in the machine. So I've installed the switch up here. So I'll label that once we've uh, completed the job. And these wires come from the switch. Here, so I've labeled them ground. So the ground is the next one that we're gonna connect. And uh, having a look at the wiring diagram again, We have our green pin connector here, and ground goes into pin number one. So up here we've got labelled ground, pin number one. So this will be popped into there and tightened up. So our wiring so far, we have the positive cable coming out of the pneumatic solenoid. That's the orange one that you can see. That one's plugged into pin 6. The next one is the pin 5, which is wind. That goes through to the switch, but also to the negative on the pneumatic solenoid. Pin 4 is status, and that goes directly to the switch. Pin 1 is ground, and that also goes directly to the switch. So that gets connected up here onto the controller board. Okay, so I have the relay switch here. And I've just put some these ta the tape on there with the numbers, and that, no, those numbers relate to the numbers printed on the uh, relay switch next to each pole. So we're going to connect up the vol the low voltage side that goes to the controller. I'll pop this up on the screen, but you'll see here that we have between A1 and A2 on our diagram, we have a diode. So the diode's the arrow with the little line and the line goes towards A2. So when we're looking at that, I have um, A2 as pole number 14 on this relay switch, and A1 I have as pole 13. So we're gonna have the line of the diode closest to pole 14. So there's pole 14, and we'll pop that in there. So wiring up the relay, we have two wires coming out the back near the red uh, tab that's on the, the relay switch. And we have a diode in there. The diode 
has the white line closest to the section that is A2 on the wiring diagram or on this in this case pin number 14. We've got two voltage uh, low voltage cables coming off that two cables on the low voltage side of the relay switch and they'll get connected up to the controller board. So just having a look back inside the machine we've got our relay switch that needs to be wired in so back step a little bit we've got to pull this connector back out because if we have a look at our wiring diagram A1 on the diagram I've got as um, pole number 13 on our relay switch so that A1 gets plugged into um, socket 4 on that, con on that control plug the other one is A2 has a diode between those two and we have that cable running through to the 24 volt pin 6 so I'll wire that up they can now get plugged back in so this relay switch is going to be mounted down the back here so that it's closer to the mains power that's why I've left a nice long lead or cable on there so once this relay switch is wired in as per the diagram connecting the main supply uh, on the relay switch it will main supply will go between 9 and 5 and once that's done then the ultimate air assist is all wired up and hopefully will work the way it should we'll give it a go so let's just do a quick recap we've got the pneumatic solenoid which I will get mounted but at the moment I'm just going to sit it here we've got the 24 volt supply coming out of the controller board into the pneumatic solenoid we've also got another pair of cables that run across to our relay which is being mounted down here so that relay we have the 24 volt supply on the bottom near the red tab and on the top rail here we have the 240 or 220 volt supply that runs to the bottom plug that is on the back of the machine and in that plug we have the air the air pump is connected into that plug at the bottom so that's the relay switch the solenoid valve and up the top we've included the air tap and now for the moment of truth I'm going to plug it in and we're going to turn it all on and reconnect all the connections So far so good, everything's looking okay. I'm going to close this up. Okay, so the machine has started up now and everything's looking good. There's uh, no smoke coming out of it, which is a bonus. The air pump isn't running, but if I flick this switch, then we've got it on manual. So that would be manual and this would be on auto. So what I'm going to do is a couple of tests. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some engraving. Just this text, air assist on. So the green, the green layer, I have enabled the air assist. And on the red layer, I've turned air assist off. What I'm going to do is just uh, run this. And we'll look at the difference with the air assist on and with the air assist off. So what I'm going to do before I start engraving is just show you um, the difference between air on and air off. So on the job I've enabled air on this one and I've disabled air on this one. And it's just a piece of paper suspended on some magnets. Now I'm just going to run the, the job and you'll see the difference. Currently the air pump is off. I'm not going to uh, touch the um, switch at all. I'm just going to press start on the machine. You can see that the air pump automatically came on and the air assist is working on that top job. 
once that one finishes the airflow will stop and you can see that there's no air coming out there the paper's barely moving when the job finishes the air pump will automatically switch off What that also means is I can attach a power board where the air pump is plugged in and put the exhaust fan on there as well. So that's really good because when the machine is running the exhaust will automatically come on and when the job's finished the exhaust will stop. I'm just going to do one more test. What I've got now is the exhaust fan and the air pump are both plugged into that power outlet that has the relay switch attached which means when I start a job the exhaust and the air will automatically come on and when the job is finished they'll both go off. So what I'd do is if you wanted to install something like this is at least allow a couple of hours to a, to a day to muck around and get it uh, all set up but uh, once it's up and going it's a great addition to the machine I'm very happy to have it uh, installed it's something I've wanted to do for a while uh, I've got the manual on and auto switch up the top here so I can turn the air on or off whenever I want I've also got my exhaust fan connected to that same power outlet so that's quite handy You've got the little ball joint, a uh, ball tap inside the air assist here. So if you had part of the job that you forgot to turn air off for, you could always pause it, turn the tap off, and continue the job with the air off. So you get a lot of extra control over the machine and where and where you're using the air. So thanks for visiting Matt's workshop. I've really enjoyed putting this in and I'm looking forward to using it in my uh, up and coming projects and jobs that I'm doing. Uh, if you haven't already, you can press the like button if you like the video, share it with your friends. You'll find all my social media and web links in the description below. Again, where you'll also find the D web link for Cloud Ray Laser where you can find this Ultimate Air Assist. And until next time, take care. Cheers.